Hello there, Leos. Welcome to your weekly reading. So this is going to run roughly from December 3rd until December 9th. So when I was shuffling the cards, um, I saw the scene at the racetrack. And it's not a horse race. I feel like it's a dog race. So you have these greyhounds racing. And I don't know why that is. But um, what I'm feeling is it's, um, you know, they're, they're released from the starting gate. And they're all sprinting around and around, uh, going around the, the racetrack. And it seems as if, you know, there there's no end in sight. It's just, I don't even know how many rounds they're supposed to go. So that's what I, I saw for you. And um, I feel like the energy for this week is really telling you to slow down, telling you to get your bearing, telling you to kind of ask a lot more questions. Um, like rather than going back and forth in circles, you should ask, you know, what does it entail? What are my responsibilities? Uh, what do you expect from me? And, um, you know, just lay it all out, out on the line or at least like getting the, 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 all the details first before you can make a decision. And as at the same time, I feel like, you know, reading things clearly uh, reading between the, the lines, reading the fine prints, and trying to make sure that you have all the information you need before you rush full speed ahead with something. So it, it's sort of like doing things the smart way rather than the hard way, okay? And it, it's, it, I, I just feel like, you know, somebody tells you to jump, you jump. But that's not the way that it should be. You should ask them motives, you should ask them the reason, and you should be able to make these decisions on your own rather than just going through the motions like these uh, greyhounds around a track following, you know, that um, that bunny that they, they set up to kind of allow the dogs to run in circles. So exercising a little bit more restraint and, you know, don't get toyed with, okay? Um, what I feel initially when I pulled out this spread here is um, I feel like for many of you, you are coming into this week single. And I feel like there's a huge single vibe that I'm, I'm sensing. And you have left a relationship behind from the past. You occasionally think back or you occasionally, you know, wonder about this person from the past where you've invested a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of energy, and just a lot of love and emotions and affection into that person. And I definitely see an opposites attract type of energy where there were, um, you know, there, there was once upon a time a lot of love. But I, I just feel almost like when the love is there, it's, it's amazing. But when the conflict was there, it's also very, very fiery and it, it got out of control really, really quickly. So I, I feel like there might have been temper flare-ups in the interaction between you and that past person. And the passion was great. The love was great. But the conflict was also really great. And I feel like some of you still think back wonder and wonder, you know, how is that person doing? I wonder what they're up to. I wonder where they are living. I wonder if they're single. So there's like, you know, the, the, the nudges in the back of your mind, hoping that they're okay. However, you are encountering new people for this week. Okay, what I have here is the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups, this is a seemingly like a soulmate connection. So I feel like some of you have um, started dating and you are encountering the energy of a person that is really, you feel a very strong soul connection towards this person. You feel almost like you can spend, you know, a lot of time on the phone with them, like staying up. I'm, I'm seeing even adults staying up really, really late, deep into the night, talking to this person, texting back and forth, and just very wrapped up in this new person. And, and it's, it looks really, really beautiful. Like it's a beginning stages of a love relationship. Um, I feel like many of you feel very, very deeply for this new person. And I feel like you have to be a little bit more discerning. So don't get swept off your feet too fast, too soon. 
uh, get to know them a little bit more. Go on a few dates before you become intimate with them. Okay, if you haven't already, go on a few more dates. Ask a few more questions. Take off those rose-colored glasses and, you know, really immerse yourself to, to find out a little bit more about this person. Don't let your emotions and your feelings and the passion and the chemistry kind of override your good judgment, okay? Because I feel like, I, I believe you that, you know, you, you feel this really strong soul connection, but I, I also feel like it's clouding your judgment. I'm seeing a lot of speculation here and like wishful thinking, okay? It's like I've waited for so long. I was in such a bad relationship in the past and it took me a really long time to get to this point where I'm okay and then all of a sudden you meet this person who sweeps you off your feet. So of course it's going to feel very, very faded. Like I've waited for you for so long. However, you want to be rational about this and you know, come in with eyes wide open so that you know what to expect so that you don't get hurt, okay? Um, so there's definitely new love, new beginnings um, showing up here. And I, I honestly feel like this is going to be a really, um, it's a, a really heartwarming type of a week nevertheless, okay? Just make sure you ask those important questions. Make sure that you... Um, really get to know the other person, okay? Allow the other person to talk. Allow them to, to, to uh, allow yourself to get into the inner psyche of this person because I, I do feel like the attraction is really strong. The emotional connection is really strong. Physical attraction is really strong. And so you're like, this is the one, but I feel like you need to be a little bit more careful. Uh, where this person is coming from, um, I'm feeling like they are somebody that is very financially stable, but there are some quirks about their personality. They show up as the two of cups, but also the devil. And the devil is basically, um, I usually think of this in a mild way. It could be control issues. It's somebody that is quite jealous. They can have control issues. They can also even have substance abuse issues, even though I feel like it, it might have been in their past, okay? They might have been experimental in their youth, in their 20s, in their 30s. They've kicked the habit and, you know, they're trying to get their self, themselves in alignment. So I feel like these are things that people don't reveal, you know, on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth date. These are things that people reveal once. They've already been, you know, physically intimate with you. So this is why it is really important to kind of delay that process and to be able to flush these things out. So I definitely feel like they, they might have had some substance abuse things in their past. Um, I'm also seeing control issues. I'm also seeing somebody who is, um, who is a little bit of adrenaline junkie and who takes a lot of risks, okay? And this habit doesn't die. So that means... They're constantly looking for stimulation from their environment. And if the relationship starts in a burst of energy and passion and excitement, it's going to fizzle out because you're looking at somebody who is essentially chasing, chasing the high, okay? Like they're, they're going around looking for the next big high. And it could be the emotional roller coaster of a relationship or it could be, you know, just looking for excitement from their external environment, like they, they can't really sit still. So I'm, I'm sensing that you need to really be clear headed and, and not, you know, I mentioned for Taurus to follow their heart because Taurus people are generally very, very cautious. But I feel like with you guys, it's the reversed. Okay, you guys are not as cautious. And you're letting your heart guide this entire process and you're not seeing the situation uh, clearly. So you have some amazing cards and it's all it's telling you is to slow down. Okay. I don't feel like this is a bad person at all, but I also feel as if, if you rush the process too fast, too soon, it's going to burn out and fizzle out. And, um, that baseline rapport would not have been established for the two of you to, you know, build the foundation of this relationship properly. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean it's not going to work with the person. It just means you have to slow it down to really f 
define and build that, that common ground first before it can take off in a productive way. So that's what I'm sensing here. Um, for those of you in coupled relationship, there are a lot of, um, I, I'm seeing like financial worries, okay, between you and the partner. And I, I feel like one person, once again, might be uh, very successful and the other person is um, is not as well employed, is not bringing home, you know, the, the same amount. And, you know, the, the, the balance and the give and take in the relationship, it's, it's effort. It's not so much about monetary uh, gains, but I definitely feel some lopsidedness when it comes to the two of you uh, working together as a couple and there's an imbalance in the resources and the responsibilities being shared between two people and I feel like that is putting a little bit of a strain in the relationship. It's not a major strain, but I feel like it's um, it's definitely something that you wish could be resolved or could be straight now you might wish that if you're the one that's earning a lot you could wish that your partner is matching your level so that it creates less of a financial burden on you and then vice versa if you're the one that's not making enough money or not making um, enough to the extent of your partner you wish the financial situation would change I feel uh, February things are going to look really good okay financially so whatever lopsidedness will be balanced out, I feel like in the February time frame, there's new things coming into the picture, new projects, new work, new opportunities that will be emerging. Um, so it's, it's going to take a little bit longer of a wait, but it's going to be fine. Um, I'm also sensing as well. I, I feel like for, for some of you, there is an... Um, there's communication here coming through from an ex, okay? And I feel like you're giving this a second go round. Like you're, you're giving it a second go. You're giving it another chance. And you are going to want to reconnect with this person. Um, I'm seeing here Capricorn, Aquarius. Capricorn, Aquarius. Um, Virgo. Capricorn, Aquarius, Virgo. I have the Devil, the Star, and the Hermit. Um, those are the, the cards that represent um, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Virgos respectively. So there's uh, news coming through from an ex. And this is the person that you feel, you know, you, you, you really did love them. And they really did love you too. And you're wanting to give this a second chance. And so if this is, you know, somebody that you feel like that, that you have that soulmate connection with, make sure you take it very slowly as well. Okay. I generally, as a rule, I, I don't advocate for getting back together with exes because every relationship has a time and a season. And once we are past that expiration date, you know, we usually go back due to that sense of nostalgia, due to that sense of familiarity, due to the fact that we spent, you know, a lot of time and emotions with them. So of course we're going to care about them. So it's easy to kind of transition back, but life moves forward. So I, I feel like you're going to want to reconnect with this person and give it a second chance and hope for the best. And, you know, nothing's really going to stop you, but just slow down listen and pay attention to all the red flags and you might come to the realization that you know as as much as you want and as much as you hope it's kind of like the racetrack it's going around in circles and there's a lot of wishful thinking here there's a big sense of romanticism like seeing things through a very idealistic um, uh, frame of framework and um, we, in order for us to make things work and in order for us to, you know, um, in order for things to pan out well this time around, we just need to be very realistic, okay? So that's what I'm sensing here. Um, I'm also seeing for many of you, let me see here. There is a person in your life that is um, that you really, really care about. You want to give them the world. For some of you, this can be, you know, just children. For some of you, this is like taking care of um, parents, wanting to show them that, you know, I've made it. You took really good care of me, that now I want to reciprocate. I want to take care of you. 
or you know look at uh, what I'm doing with my life look at how successful I am professionally and I want to buy you a house I want to buy you a car so you want to really show somebody appreciation and then for others of you this can be a, re um, a relationship partner who has you know stuck by your side through the worst of it and through the best of it and I feel like there were definitely low points in your life and I do see as well as substance abuse okay so, um, and it doesn't even have to be, you know, like the, it, it doesn't even have to be, what I feel is there was a point and it seemed like a turning point in your life. I don't know how long ago this was where it changed the trajectory of your life. And I feel like it, it might've been drugs related. So for example, um, you might have, you know, gone to the hospital for some health issues. Life was going well. You had a job and, you know, you might have gone to the hospital for some some type of surgery. And then you became dependent on, you know, the, the painkillers. And then everything kind of unraveled, okay? And uh, I feel like this might have happened in the past. And you're trying to get your life back on track. And this person stood with you through through the worst of it. Okay, so they, they were around, they were kind of like your, your cheerleader, and no matter what, they stuck around. And then for others of you, it could have been like, you know, hanging out with the wrong people, getting caught with um, drugs in your car, and then, you know, like, ha I, I feel like it's, it's like that. It's something that you felt was very, very innocent and very minor, but the laws are created a, in a way where, you know, they're not very lenient with these offenses. So I, I feel like there was a major turning point involving drugs. And I feel like there was somebody or there still is somebody that stuck around and you want to give them the world. You're trying to get yourself life back on track. You're trying to give them everything that, that um, you're trying to give them everything to show how much their presence and their support means to you. It could be a parent, it could be like a friend, it could be a lover. And um, I feel like at this point, some of you are still dealing with a little bit of a financial slump and you wanna buy this person a car, you wanna buy this person a house, you want to you know, uh, buy them like a vacation to some exotic location, you wanna wish them away, you want to just show and express it through some type of a gift and finances are a little bit rocky so you're not able to do that and I feel like the financial situation will show up um, will be a lot better for you guys next year and I feel like in the meantime what we need to really understand is that you know this person was there for you through thick and thin and money and all of these things they're nice all of these gifts you know they're they're nice and all but maybe it doesn't mean as much to them as it means to you so maybe there are other ways of showing our appreciation okay you want these grand gestures but i feel like the other person might not even care they just care about your presence they care about your well-being they want to make sure you're okay and so that's that means a lot more to them than this you know townhouse than this uh, vacation to the bahamas than this um than like this luxury car okay so getting to the bottom of well not so much getting to the bottom of things but like kind of uh, drawing back drawing back and really looking at what's really important okay I, and I, I do feel though finances will pick up okay and it'll be fine um, for those of you who are dealing with an, uh, a water sign, so a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, uh, and also an Aquarius, you have somebody that has been with you through some really, really intense stuff. You have somebody that's kind of like that rye or die type of person in your life. And you have somebody that really understands you in and out. They understand every single thing that you do. They understand your facial expressions. They understand like uh, your emotions. Like they, they really, really have a deep-rooted understanding of you. 
And sometimes it can feel a little bit scary, right? Like when the other person knows us so well, knows what we need without us having to verbalize it. It, it can feel very comfortable, but it can also feel a little bit unnerving. This is somebody that is 100% on your side. So you need to nurture this relationship, okay? Nurture it emotionally, okay? You don't have to throw money at it. You don't have to, um, you know, financially... Um, You, you don't, it, it, it's, it's like money doesn't really matter in this situation. So I definitely feel like you've got somebody that is really going, going to be by your side. They're going to stick by your side and they're going to cling to you no matter what. And they'll, they'll always be there. And so their love is very unconditional and it feels really beautiful. It feels very soothing to me. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, this is somebody that um, despite all the bumps in the road and you might encounter a little bit, a few bumps this week, despite all the bumps in the road, um, they're still going to be around, okay? So try to fix it. If they're still going to stick around, you might want to just fix it because they're going to be around no matter what, so you can't get rid of them. So I definitely feel here um, there's a need to kind of just uh, sort out our priorities and sort out what's really important in our lives and who's important in our lives and try to work at and nurture and really, you know, strengthen those relationships. So I, I did mention X is coming back. Um, there's another message here. It ties in with that image that I saw where I mentioned that, you know, you have to kind of read the fine print before you get into a situation. If you are, for example, thinking about buying something, something big, okay, like a big item, big ticket item, make sure you read the warranties, make sure you read between the lines. And I'm seeing like, you know, big screen TVs. I'm seeing as well, like, um, appliances for the home, um, things that are over $800. You need to really read the fine prints. Okay. And, and, um, if you can, please wait after December 6th, because that's the end of the Mercury retrograde period. If you're buying electronics, do not buy them during the Mercury retrograde period because they will malfunction. They will have faulty wiring. They will have issues with them. And if you haven't read the terms of the contract, you might not be able to return these items. Okay, so just make sure you wait until that December 6th time frame just to be safe. And either way, read the fine prints. All right. So I'm going to leave it at that, Leos. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. And best of luck with everything. I'll see you in about a week. Bye-bye.